can TRT be beneficial for cancer patients or patients with cancer? Uh, we're going to discuss this next, so keep watching. Hi, and welcome back to another Balance My Hormones video. Today, we are going to discuss TRT and how it might be something that patients with cancer may have to make a decision on whether they you know they stop it or or continue it or start it in some situations and whether it's beneficial um so with cancer obviously the cancer is a massive umbrella term and it depends on where it's affecting the person and the stage etc but just generally just having a discussion about whether we think it could or couldn't be the positives and negatives um obviously cachexia uh, wasting from cancer like with other conditions where you know you can get muscle wasting could that be something that um is beneficial um trt being on testosterone or just having good testosterone levels or even higher than normal i suppose is how it used to be used for patients with cachexia what do you think george yes absolutely i mean uh, cachexia comes from the proteins that are released during cancer known as cachectins that leads to this uh, wasting syndrome, you know, and uh, losing muscle mass. So HIV and cancer lead to cachexia and muscle wasting. And testosterone, of course, are androgens and anabolic steroids are able to develop this, this disease, the, this, um, this symptom. And actually, this is what the main reason they, are, they were developed and manufactured by doctors and physicians. But we have to know that people with cancer or HIV uh, are are developing also because of muscle muscle loss. They develop osteopenia or osteoporosis are vulnerable to bone fractures and of course anemia. So this triple cachexia, anemia and oste osteoporosis are the is are the symptoms that can be reversed by the use of testosterone. Now the point is should I start testosterone because I have cancer and cachexia or definitely I'm hypogonadic with cancer and I, I need to, I must get into TRT. Um, of course, we have to know that testosterone itself is not a toxic hormone to the, to the liver, to the kidneys. Uh, now, of course, uh, prostate is debatable if um, prostate cancer can be administrated uh, during prostate cancer, we can administrate testosterone. Certainly it's debunked myth the, the direct correlation of testosterone replacement therapy and prostate cancer. But I think that uh, the injectable or the transdermal form of testosterone are not toxic to the liver. Now, methyl testosterone was an oral form of testosterone used back in the 80s um, by athletes mainly. It was highly toxic to the liver because it was 17 alkylated, but it, this has nothing to do with uh, injectable testosterone, which is not toxic to the liver enzymes, of course, and does not lead to any dyslipidemia unless it's abused, of course, it may lower HDL. So I believe testosterone is a familiar hormone that could be used and beneficial during this wasting disease. And of course, having low hematocrit and having fragile bones. So I do believe it matches perfectly well with uh, these conditions. Okay, so maybe, maybe we we uh, we need to just say that obviously with your if you're a patient with cancer, we, we, this is any sort of medical advice. Obviously, every every patient's different. Certain cancers, um, you know, acts differently, respond to different things. So obviously, any patient, you know, needs to be discussing with their doctor about these things. But you know, Doctor Tuliatos was talking specifically about. Could... I learned myself from Nelson Verger, who's an HIV yeah. survivor and cancer survival also. Yeah. Yes. He, was, he was using Trembolon during his lymphoma in order to reverse his aging. Of course, Trembolon could say it's unacceptable. Okay, Nandrolon is acceptable, however. And testosterone is more, even because if you lack of testosterone, you must use it, okay? So under hypogonadism and cancer, certainly TRT is beneficial. Yeah, so that's, um, I suppose, for cachexia in particular, you know, this is why the anabolic steroids were designed and made, and that's what you're saying, and that's why they're... Along with high-protein diet and perhaps some form of physical activity 
resistance yeah. physical activity. Uh, I mean, an obvious one is, I suppose, once you've had, if you've had testicular cancer, we, we know the output of that, you know, after you're in remission or after your removal of, of the testes, men may end up going on testosterone replacement therapy after. And I think that's something that's been- Actually, they take off one of the testicles, not yeah. both of them, you know. But, but under flu castration, uh, yes, of course, yes. You need replacement therapy afterwards. But if the, if the individual is young, then they keep one testicle just in case, you know, for some IVF perhaps. Yeah, we have, we have a few, quite a few guys who've had one testicle removed because of uh, cancer and they have hit, you know, a hypogonadic state um, maybe earlier that you, you might argue, but you wouldn't know, I suppose. But they, um, yeah, they've ended up needing it um, may, as well. You yeah. may argue that one may not be enough. Mm. You may need both, but you know it's i guess it's an individual case and and this is i think a bit of a touchy topic and uh we, it's just general uh, awareness i think is why we, we we made this video yeah i think that the you know they could cachexia is is still being i mean there's a lot of money going into finding drugs um they sort of gave up on the anabolic steroids which obviously were all of the the changes from sort of our hormones to try there and make were some few cases of some friends of mine that their dad was suffering from prostate cancer and they asked me doc should i give him some deca and i told them deca is metabolized to dehydronandrol or not dehydrotestosterone it has no impact on benign prostatic hypertrophy and they told me that they used deca and they were capable of standing from the bed using the bathroom you know mm -hmm. so the daily life the, the lifestyle was improved um but i'm not sure if you can use deca under living cancer of course i would say testosterone could be less uh, risky and less uh, toxic yeah i mean even even like the psalms and things that obviously haven't come into proper use yet you know this is what they're targeting as well is now we have to know that the uh, oxandrolone has application to cancer patients you know against the weight 10 milligrams a day for instance yeah so they are still used, you know, the anabolic steroids around. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I suppose like this, this is when we go into things like prostate cancer, things like that. Obviously, that's a you know certain situation. I know there's lots of research going into uh, even treating prostate cancer with sort of bipolar androgen therapy at the moment. So high, high bursts of testosterone and then sort of removal of it and things, but. Um, and, and there are plenty of doctors around the world that when guys are in remission from um, from prostate cancer or, or in a certain, you know, they, they, they've weighed up the, the benefits and risks if they are in, in, a, in a lot of surveillance and actually the benefit in an older, older man of having better testosterone for quality of life outweighs his potential risk and he makes that decision. It is being used in men with low testosterone. But again, this, is, this has got to be a situation where um, you know, if you can see like the doctor, uh, Dr. Tuliato saying that, you know, it, it, the benefits of the body that it has, you know, it's obviously a way up against the actual medical advice of your oncologist, whoever you're under. Um, I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, the, um, yeah, because you've got things like IGF-1, you know, where does that link, et cetera, um, with, with, with certain cancers? Well, right? the special could elevate IGF-1, but under... Uh not significant uh, levels you know well the one study they did in in the eu to approve tesmorelin uh the fear from the eu regulators was uh that the, the tesmorelin was raising the igf1 level too high it's and ghrh it was, uh, yeah it? but it's like well that's what you would you'd get a similar elevation with human growth hormone what are you what are you on about but so they they put um tesmorelin or a grift as a brand name on a named use only in europe so it's a bit bizarre because uh, I think it's another story of, you know, you have um, uh, angiogenesis that you try to, to inhibit with anti-VEGF drugs. Should we then assume uh, on, on this front that um, maybe your blood's bad? Blood's, you know, your blood's going to feed the cancer. Therefore, should we remove your blood vessels or growth uh, for everyone? Um, yeah, angiogenesis I, is actually something that can be induced by MK677, uh, by, I'm sorry, by BP157 that we use for connective tissue. And actually this is carcinogenic, yes, because the tumor is enlarged by more blood vessels, you know? 
if you have a tumor, but you know, the same method was considered um, VEGF drugs for helping re, uh, people who have had heart attacks to regrow blood vessels, or even the VEGF process in you know, the body uh, gets re Yeah, under heart attack, you survive when you have collateral situation. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's um, I think it's just the, the, the modern approach uh, and, a, and a very much a fear, because obviously no one wants to have, if they have an active cancer, have it grown. Um, well, it's it's uh, contradictory to give to, uh, to 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 give to take IGF one or growth hormone on the cancer state, you know. Oh, because they're considered, you know, growth mitigating. We'll fit it. We'll fit it. Yeah. yeah. And then I suppose the the other area where um, uh, you know there's some studies I found a recent study um, about this, what 2018, where if you are a terminal cancer patient, you know, there's there's some studies. There's, smaller sample groups, but seven weeks of testosterone, 100 milligrams of enanthate a week. Um, they, uh, they were terminal cancer patients. You know, they still had similar sort of um, uh, times of death from the point, you know, when they got sort of uh, their diagnosis, et cetera. But the ones that had testosterone had better muscle mass, had better quality of life, all of those things to the end. So. I suppose there is this consideration and you could have a discussion with your doctor if you are a patient, you know, someone who, you know, is looking for that better quality of life and you are terminal and you weigh up those things that, that you know, there are there are some studies showing that actually if you've got low testosterone, obviously giving testosterone and getting better levels can, can be something to improve quality of life, which is obviously of key importance when, when you're in that stage and maybe you're a terminal cancer patient. Um, so yeah, that might be another thing to to look into but um hopefully we come out with with more information about it um and maybe some other other drugs and things i mean the psalms look promising but i suppose they're 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 trying to do that for getting a, a, a some money as well out of getting a new drug you know testosterone isn't isn't something right or the anabolic steroids aren't things that i suppose are that attractive anymore to uh to big pharma well and psalms the thought is you, you can select, select the different desired androgen uh, receptor effects compared to, um, you know, testosterone is just hitting all targets of the androgen receptor. So they may be able to lessen uh, the androgenic ex, uh, experience and, uh, and improve the anabolic experience in some, some cases. Okay, cool. So that was just a brief discussion about testosterone and uh, cancer um, and how it may link and, and things people consider if they have cancer. Um, so if you, keep, if you like these videos, keep watching. Um, please sign up and uh, ring the notification bell, subscribe. Um, we'll have some more videos coming out. Uh, thanks guys for discussing that. Um, uh, we'll be back, thank you.